with Transformers Rise of the Beasts about to roll out into theatres, I thought it'd be fitting for me to review the previous instalments of the franchise. So today, let's go back to when Earth went dark. Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Aaron and today I'm going to be reviewing Transformers Dark of the Moon, which was released in 2011 and serves as a sequel to Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. The film is directed by Michael Bay and stars Shia LaBeouf, John Turturro, Rosie Huntington-Whiteley, along with John Malkovich and Francis McDormand. Set two years after the events of Revenge of the Fallen, the Autobots now work alongside humans to prevent major conflicts. During a mission to Chernobyl, the Autobots are attacked by Shockwave, and Optimus Prime discovers a fuel cell belonging to the Ark, a long-lost Autobot ship thought to have escaped Cybertron. Once they learn of the ship's location, the Autobots discover Sentinel Prime in the ship's vault, alongside with five pillars for a space bridge. Sam, who is now living with his new girlfriend Carly, is unable to work alongside the Autobots and gets himself a normal day-to-day -day job. When one of his co-workers shares information about the Ark, the Moon and the space program, it is at this time the Decepticons start killing off American and Russian personnel associated with the space program. This leads Sam to bring in former agent Seymour Simmons to work on clues. But then Sam discovers that in the past the Decepticons have raided the Ark for more space pillars. He realises that Sentinel Prime is the key. Sentinel then reveals that a deal had to be made with Megatron and that they plan to use the space bridge to bring Cybertron to Earth. Humanity will rebuild the planet. Sam, the Autobots and the military now must work together to prevent the Decepticons enslaving humanity. But at what cost? My positives for this film, and it's the one thing I praise about all of these movies, is the special effects on the Autobots and the Decepticons still hold up really well today, which I think is just fantastic. I also love the design of Megatron in this film. It's very Mad Max, which I think is just fantastic. He looks like he's pulled off Fury Road and just rolled into Chicago. There is a lot of action in this film. I think it's awesome that we get to see the Decepticons in large numbers just lay waste to a city and begin to carry out their plan. The highway speed chase sequence I thought was done very well indeed. Good tension built at 100 miles an hour. And the final battle between Optimus and Sentinel Prime I thought was really well done even though I do have a small issue with that fight, which I will get into later. They got Mr. Spock himself, yes, the legend Leonard Nimoy to voice Sentinel Prime, even though he did previously voice Galvatron in the 1986 Transformers animated movie. John Turturro and Alan Turdike in this film are brilliant. The pair look like they're having a lot of fun, and they bring some good comedy to their roles. My mixed aspect on the movie is Rosie Huntington Whiteley's character Carly. She doesn't really do anything in the movie apart from get captured and look good. Now, I am not complaining that she's looking good because in some sequences she looks smoking. But it would have been nice for them to give her character to do something rather than just run away with Sam and look good. What I'm trying to say is that I think they mishandled the character. My negatives on the film, there are a lot of characters who are completely pointless or get no development whatsoever. Sam's parents turn up for five minutes, do nothing to drive the plot forward, so completely pointless. Patrick Dempsey, he's in this movie, and I found his character to be pointless and so underdeveloped. He's decided to join the Subtigons, how, why and when, Barely explained, so don't know. Laserbeak, another Decepticon ruined. Just like Ravage in Revenge of the Fallen, turns up for five minutes, and that's that. 
Now, I don't know if this is a negative and more something I'd like to see, but I thought it would have been interesting to see some conflict within the Autobots, especially Optimus Prime. Cybertron has been brought to Earth. On one side, you'd have been relieved to see that his homeworld is safe. Megatron says it, Cybertron, you're safe. But on the other side of the coin, he wants to protect Earth and the humans. Staying on Optimus Prime, the final fight between him and Sentinel is really well done. But my issue with it is, Prime tells Sentinel, you want that pillar, you have to go through me. Fair enough. The two duke it out, great fight. But when Sentinel is about to finish Optimus off, he is begging for his life, like, please. Fucking what? You've just told that guy, if you want it, you've got to go through me. And Sentinel was willing to go through Optimus to get that pillar. And the last fight between Prime and Megatron, what a whimper that was. It barely lasts 60 seconds. Overall, I found this film a lot more entertaining than Revenge of the Fallen, along with some darker tones and some great action. And I do find this film a satisfactory conclusion to the trilogy. My rating for Transformers Dark of the Moon is 5 out of 10. Please join me in the comment section below to share your opinions. And as always, Thank you ever so much for watching and I hope to catch you at my next review.